Hey everybody, this is So Heidi, and this tutorial is on creating a down quilted effect in Illustrator. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. One is with a pattern brush. I would approach this using a pattern brush if my quilting lines were engineered, meaning that they fell on a specific portion of the garment and did not repeat. The other technique I'm going to show is doing this creating a pattern swatch and I would use a pattern swatch if I'm creating quilting lines that do repeat, meaning I've got a, a repeating pattern for the quilted effect on my garment. So first the pattern brush example. What I've done is created a dashed line which is going to emulate my stitch line and then some squiggly lines on either side which represent the sort of wrinkled quilted effect that you would get on either side of your stitch line in a down type garment. So to turn that into a pattern brush I simply select the artwork and I drag and drop that into the brushes panel. I specifically want to make this a pattern brush and I can name that if I'd like. We'll just call it quilted brush. Leave everything else default. From there, I can use my pen tool or whatever other tool that I want to draw with to draw a line. In this example, I'm going to have a, a quilted line going across the yoke. And then I just apply my pattern brush to that. I can draw the line coming across the other side and again apply my pattern brush to that. If I want to change the size of the quilting line, I think it looks a little bit big. I can do that one of two ways. I can select the path and change the stroke weight. So we'll put it at 0 0.5. That'll change it to about half the size. That looks a little bit better. I can also select the path on the artboard that I want to affect come over to my brushes panel, click on the options of selected object. Now this is going to only affect the instance of the brush which I have selected which is this one here on the right hand side. And I want to look at my scale. I'm going to change that to 50%. I've got my preview turned on so you can see what happens there. If I wanted even smaller I could change it to 25. Now the nice thing about this is that it leaves your stroke weight at a one point and it's just scaled that specific instance of the pattern brush. Um, each technique has its pros and cons and I'll leave it up to you to decide when you might want to use one versus the other. The next example is creating a repeating pattern quilted swatch. So what I've done is I want to create a box quilt. So I've created this cross type of shape with all the quilting lines in each of the corners. And when I turn this into a repeating pattern, it's going to seam up along the edges of the bounding box. You can see it's going to create a perfect repeated box type of shape. So I'll take that, drag and drop it into my swatches panel. Nothing happens. There's no dialog box or anything. It automatically turns into a pattern swatch. I can double click on there to name that if I want. From there I've got my garment and I have my garment blocked out into three different sections. I typically tend to control the sleeves independent of the body. It depends on what your end goal is. In this instance, in this example, I want to have the quilting on the sleeves be on the diagonal, whereas the quilting on the body be on the straight. So I would prefer to do this in three separate objects. You can see as I have these colored out here, there are three separate objects as opposed to having the whole body as one. So I'm going to select all three of those. I'm using my direct selection tool only because my jacket's grouped and that's the quickest way to select each of those. I then am going to come over and just apply my swap. Now my first thought is that it's pretty big so what I do is I select my garment and I choose object transform scale. Within the scale dialog box I've got the option to transform objects, patterns, and strokes and effects. So I want to uncheck transform objects and uncheck strokes and effects and I only want to transform the pattern. This allows me to independently control the pattern from the object. It's a great feature. So once you get it to the size that looks pretty good, you can go from there, just hit OK, and that looks great. Now I need to rotate. So again, using my direct selection tool to select the entire sleeve, I want to rotate the pattern in this sleeve. I choose Object, Transform, Rotate, and just like in the Scale menu, I want to uncheck the Transform Objects and just leave Transform Patterns. I've got my preview turned on and 45 looks good. So you can see it can adjust that, but we'll leave it at 45. That's exactly what I want, and we'll hit OK. Now, I could have done both sleeves at one time, but I'm doing them separately because I want to show you a cool trick with the rotate. This also applies to scale and move. 
So it's using the tilde key on your keyboard in conjunction with these features. Um, the tilde key is a little squiggly line next to the number one along the top of your keyboard. So I select the sleeve and then using the rotate tool, which is on my toolbar, shortcut letter R, I then hold the tilde key down and I'm just going to click and drag with my mouse. So you can see this, the pattern is rotating but the sleeve is not. So the tilde key allows you to rotate the pattern independent of the object. It's a little bit quicker than going into the object transform menu. So I'm going to undo that a couple times just to get it back to straight because I want to show you you can also use this in conjunction with the shift key to constrain the angle at which the pattern rotates. So tilde and shift click and drag with my mouse, it forces it to rotate in 45 degree increments. I release my mouse first, I then release the shift and the tilde key, and now my pattern is rotated perfectly. So, two ways to do quilted lines, uh, both fairly similar. You've got to create the quilted stitch line with the squiggles on either side, and then just depending on your needs, turn it into a pattern brush or a pattern swatch. Thanks for watching, I hope you found this useful.